Welcome to Revival Time Hub, the fire shall ever be burning upon the altar, it shall never go out. Hallelujah. South Africa shouted loud, believing, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me request that you hold someone by your left and right and let's just pray in the spirit for a few minutes. I believe God is doing something mighty. The atmosphere is stirred. Go ahead. Go ahead and pray in the spirit. Bless the name of the Lord. Shevala Kuparato Sebregedi. Ede Shali Ka Prosadi Balatu Sibadashi. Shadebala Kota Prante Keparutu Sebregedi Si. Shapratos kebranti giba lako sabrati giba radosia. I prantos koti brati giba lada bagada bosh. We're pressing for a few minutes. Shh, ada gete balaka tapara da kata bosh. Krate kapalanto sabre ke balato sabre ke di balako tish. Legra pate ke paratos kapran taparatos kapratis ke beletos. Legre kete bekete kete barada bakata parantos kopre keti balakos sabrati ke parados. Shanada da bakata bakata bada kaparatos koto prente ke berete. Kratos kate paratos sede velete paratos shetegeis. Emprata kata balakata prete ke berete ke parado katos. Pantos salada bakote prato ke bereto ke pratiata. Shalaga da balaga da bakata barados. Rakata prante ke balato sabrati ka parato skiata balando skiate. Few minutes. Press with your eyes fixed on Jesus. Shada balada bakata prante ke de balakata. Rakata prante ke de parato skote prake di balaka parato. Prate ka balato shali ke parato skoto prake de balata. I lato shabratis ke veledo parantos sebregete shieta. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. In Jesus' marvelous name we pray. Amen. Before. Before I honor the man of God and go to the ministry of the word, I have two prophetic words for South Africa. And I want you to write it down and I want you to please pay attention. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 10 and verse 27 says, That which I tell you in the secret, it says, Declare thou. On the mountain tops when God wants to move he moves by revealing his intent and then he mandates that his intent be declared and if it is declared and believed then his word comes to pass his word does not come to pass because he said it his word comes to pass because he found men who believed him and walked in keeping with that prophecy. The first thing the Lord revealed to me and he asked me that before I preach, I announce this to South Africa. I wrote it here, that there is going to be an organized emergence of serious-minded prophetic intercessors <laughs> all over South Africa. Now, there are people who pray, but this is what it is going to be an organized emergence. It will be like a tsunami of prophetic intercessors. And the Lord says the measure of grace for that assignment has already been released over South Africa. 
a very strange emergence ordinary people ordinary people they will start some of them it will look like a joke but it will begin to build momentum by a force that cannot be described hallelujah there is grace this prophetic intercession will allow for an outpouring of the spirit of holiness there will be repentance there will be realignments that people from their homes will begin to realign with spiritual things this is the first prophetic word and i believe that in this place and scattered across the crowd are men and women who god will find to be part of these prophetic intercessors some of you will not be able to rest again after today something will rest upon your spirit it will drive you to the place of prayer it will drive you to the place of intercession in the name of jesus there are three things the lord told me would be the theme of this prophetic intercession number one it will be warfare against the spirit of lust number two it will be warfare against idolatry number three it will be warfare against the spirit of hate and agitation these three things that's why I told you to write it down and record it not everybody is a noisemaker there are people who fear God are we together an organized emergence of prophetic intercessors prophecy number two the Lord himself will begin to raise and train a new breed of indigenous apostolic voices indigenous not just people coming indigenous apostolic voices the truth I will tell you is that South Africa has not witnessed a lot of apostolic voices there have just been a few faithful pillars like your man of God and the angel in this house but there is about to be a very strange move of God where God will start handpicking men many of those young people please listen many of them will be carried out of South Africa for their training before they return back they will not be trained this is what the Lord told me I saw three nations some of them will be taken to Nigeria for training some of them will be taken to America for training some of them will be taken to Europe for training but they will not be established there they will only be taken by the spirit like Moses was taken out of Egypt then sent back to Egypt hmm. but there will be a new breed very ordinary unassuming young men and women they will arise by the spirit of grace many of you may not realize the kinds of investments that have been made over South Africa there has been a cry that God will arise and visit the land and let me tell you in this season God is about to move in a very powerful way so in the coming months weeks some of you will begin to have very strange burdens of the spirit you will find yourself for one year two years six months literally go out of this place you will disguise your going using a job using marriage it doesn't matter you must learn to look beyond what is taking you there are graces there are mantles there are trainings there are wells that you must drink from but i can tell you this by the spirit of the living god that these two prophetic words will come to pass the rise of prophetic intercessors in a very organized manner very organized manner and then the rise of apostolic voices that God will train many of them will not be trained within the land 
Malachi chapter 3 and verse 3. Malachi chapter 3 and verse 3. Please give it to us. Let me just do my thing and then we'll sit down. I'd like us to read together if you can. One, two, go. This is what God is going to be doing with the apostolic ministry. It's going to be a refiner's fire. Many, many young people who are sincere but have been under wrong mentorship. They've learned a lot of wrong things about life, the spirit life, ministry. God, by his mercy, will be meticulously correcting, chiseling, refining like the pot and the clay, like the refiner's fire. Hallelujah. Can I give you the last prophetic word? This prophetic word is for those who have kept the testimony of Jesus so far. I have two scriptures for you. 1 Corinthians 10 and verse 12. This is for those who God has helped to stand. The Lord told me to emphasize this word again. And I thank God for providing this kind of platform. It says, therefore, let him that thinketh he stands take heed lest he falls. Let him that thinketh he stands take heed lest he falls. Second Corinthians 3 and verse 5. These are the two scriptures that God has helped you to maintain integrity, whether in life whether in ministry, whether in business, so that you are not swallowed up by the deception of pride. Here is a scripture to give you longevity. It says, not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God. Can we pray for one minute over all these prophetic words? Please go ahead. Make this prayer investment for one minute. Make this prayer investment. When the Lord speaks, He has the power to bring what He says to pass. But He must find willing men. Let your word come to pass over South Africa. Indeed, let prophetic intercessors arise men and women trained to understand the ways of the spirit men who have access to the secrets of god that they will wax mighty and valiant in prayer pray that god will raise a new breed of authentic genuine consecrated apostolic voices In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. You believe that? Shout amen. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Can you walk on my sound a bit? Just, just a bit for me. Thank you. While standing, ladies and gentlemen, please, I want you to help me honor my friend and brother, Apostle Felix Oko and his lovely wife, Pastor Bulelwa. Give them a big God bless you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Hallelujah. It's always a joy to visit South Africa, not just to preach, but to share fellowship with him. Thank you for your love. Thank you for friendship. Thank you for brotherhood. God bless you, sir. Hallelujah. And I want you to please help me honor Papa and Mama Anselm. God bless you. Honor you, sir. Let's give them a big God bless you. God bless you, sir. Bless you, ma. It's always an honor. Hallelujah. And please allow me to honor Reverend Ike Wednesday. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. He gave us a surprise visit while in UK. We had the conference and he showed up and um, it, was so, it was so refreshing with you. Thank you so much, sir. Amen. I honor every man 
Every woman of God here, I may not know you by name, but I honor you sincerely. May the Lord bless you in the name of Jesus. Spirit of the living God, we pray that you will breathe upon us in a mighty way tonight. Open our eyes to see. Open our ears to hear. We desire to experience your glory in a dimension that we have not experienced before. Therefore, move among us and glorify the Son. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Conferences like this help us to access the mysteries of the kingdom. The mysteries of the kingdom are the secrets by which we exert dominion upon this cosmos. The secrets by which we frontier and advance the purposes of the kingdom. The secrets by which we live and we reign victorious. The victory of the believer is predicated upon the secrets of God that we have access to and that we engage even by faith. Hallelujah. So when God calls for a convergence like this, it is because he intends for an upgrade in the spirit. First, an upgrade in our spiritual understanding. The Bible says grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge through the knowledge grace and peace is multiplied on the strength of knowledge hallelujah if we lack the requisite knowledge first the knowledge of god and then the ways of the spirit it will be impossible to command dominion and so speaker after speaker beginning my session now i believe that god has been building our minds building our spiritual understanding and i want you to lend me your attention for the few minutes that we have tonight as i introduce my session i truly believe that apostle felix got precisely um, as a capture the theme for your conference that which god is doing across the globe habakkuk said i will stand upon my watch and i will set myself upon the tower so that I will see what he will say unto me. Part of the apostolic ministry is not just to preach. In fact, the apostolic office is a governmental office. It is primarily saddled with the responsibility of tapping through the frequency of the Spirit to understand the speakings of the Spirit per time, per season. And then in partnership with the prophetic to interpret for God's people that which God intends to do and to show them the pathway that makes it happen. Are we together now? Yes. So it is you are you are under an unction that is helping to give prophetic perspective the things that God is doing now. It's important for us to be aligned to know what God is doing now in your nation, across Africa, across the nations of the earth. Because if you do not know, you see. The power of God always follows the speakings of God. What God is saying is where his power is moving. Are we together now? And if you cannot discern the speakings of God per season, per time, you will not be able to capture the grace that should back those speakings. In the name of Jesus Christ. And so I'll be speaking tonight on the topic. It's going to be a series. I'll be exhausting that all through my session. We see Jesus we see Jesus. Tonight will be part one. Please give us Hebrews chapter two from verse eight and nine. Let's look at the word of God and obtain wisdom by the power of the Holy Spirit. And that whilst the word of God comes in the name that is above all names, I declare that the power of God to heal, the power of God to deliver, the power of God to set free, may it also be active as you hear God's word. The difference between the ministry of the Spirit and a lecture is that whilst one affects your mind and your intellectual understanding, the lecture now, the Word of God transcends beyond your mind. There is a spirit communication happening. And when it has to do with the spirit communication, words are not the only tools. 
there is a dimension of the speakings of God that does not come in words. It is light. It enters into your spirit man and begins to do a work in your spirit man. Are we learning now? So let your heart be opened in the name of Jesus. The Bible says, But thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet, for in that you did not leave anything that was not put under him. He says, But now. The reality now is we do not yet see all things under the feet of man. Verse 9. It says, but we see Jesus. We do not see dominion yet at work in man. Even though the Bible said that he was set as the zenith of God's creation, crowned with glory and honor. It says, even though we do not yet see man in that state of dominion, one consolation is that we see Jesus. Help us by the spirit of the living God. Okay, so let's go to the theme. I begin my teaching now. Hebrews chapter 12, 1 and 2. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hebrews chapter 12. Wherefore, the Bible says, that seeing that we are compassed with so great a cloud of witnesses, the Bible mandates, Paul speaking now, that we lay aside every weight and the sin that doth easily beset us. Please read the remaining line. And let us run with perseverance the race. Stop there, please. Let us run with perseverance or patience the race that is set before us. Understand the context of Paul's teaching now. Paul here is talking about the race. So every other thing he's going to communicate is with respect to this thought. Are we together now? The whole subject is about the race. There is something about the race he wants to bring to your understanding. And he's adding a lot of support thoughts. But the central communication is that there is a race that is set before us. Are we together now? This is very important. So he says that there is a race that is set before us. Then we go to verse 2. He says, looking unto Jesus. He calls him the author and the finisher of our faith. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, he despised the shame, and he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. The first thing I want us to understand tonight is that there is a race that is set before us. So the Bible calls destiny. The Bible calls our work of faith, according to Paul's exegesis, the race. Is someone understanding now? So when the Bible talks about the race... It is the name given to the summation of our days, living on earth, accomplishing destiny, and serving the purposes of the kingdom. He simply calls it the race. In 1 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 24, the same Paul is likening the believer's work of faith to a race. And here's what he says, Know ye not that they which run in a race. He's making an analogy. He says they all run, my God. So everybody, prepared or not, is running. But he makes a very interesting statement. He says only one receives the prize. He says in a race, he's using the intelligence of athletics as we know. He says in a race, it is not unusual to find many people. Are you getting the point now? But he's saying that at the end of it, there are others from the beginning, they know they will not win. Even though they are in the race. Are we together now? But then he says there is an attitude I want you to have. He says so run. That means there is a method, there is a strategy you can deploy in running your race that guarantees that you win. Are we together now? Paul is talking about the race. And here he's saying so run that we may obtain. That means there is a way you can run that race, living your life and your destiny that you live a defeated life. He says, so run, so run that we may obtain. Who is understanding me tonight? So everyone according to scripture is running a race. That life and destiny is likened to a race. And the tragedy is that already there are people who are wasting their time and will unfortunately waste their time. They are not wasting their time 
not because they are not in the field. They are wasting their time because there is a recommended strategy that guarantees victory. Are we together now? And that from the start of the race, if you do not deploy that strategy, it's already predicted that you will waste your time. So Paul says, so run. Who is understanding me so far? We're discussing Hebrews chapter 12 now and verse 1. So he says, seeing then, he's talking to athletes in the spirit, men who are running, that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. These witnesses ran their race. There is a reason why they are called witnesses. They ran with a formula that was given to them and they won. Not everyone who died is a witness. No, not everyone who died qualifies to be called the cloud of witnesses. The cloud of witnesses, a few of them are archived in Hebrews 11. The Bible calls them elders. And the reason why they are called elders was that they obtained. That's what made them elders. It was not that they were old, because some of them died young. That they ran in such a way, some young, some old. Some did not receive promises, but they obtained good reports. Are we together now? So he's teaching us how to run. This is Paul's theme. Please don't lose this. We are coming to Jesus. But Paul is saying, I want to teach you how to run in a way that you win. I want to teach your life and your destiny a strategy that guarantees dominion, guarantees victory, guarantees that your life becomes a plus, an addition to the program of God. And he says the first orientation is that you realize that you are in a race. There is an attitude an atlas has that one who is strolling around the street does not have. Are we together? When an athlete is there, even if the atlas will lose, there is first concentration and seriousness. Are we together now? Then he says, so run. Someone shout, I will run. I will run. One more time, say, I will run. I will run. Like you'll be learning tonight, some of you are already off the path. You are running somewhere else and you are in that category that Paul says, these people are just running, but that there is one who will win. He says, so run. So Paul here is speaking within the context of a race. And I told you that the word race is a capture of the entire lifespan of any man. For as long as you are alive, Paul says you are running. Whether you realize or not, whether you prepare or not, that every passing second is likened to an individual who is running a race. And that some have been able to run that race so effectively. They ran and they won. He calls them the cloud of witnesses. Then he says, seeing that we are surrounded by a cloud of witnesses that is so great, He's giving you the tools that will help you run. He says, let us lay aside every weight. If you realize that you are running, lay aside every weight because the lighter you are is an advantage. He says, let us lay aside every weight. Listen now, and the sin that doth easily beset us. In other words, the problem with that condition is that it impedes your pace to move. Easily beset us. Then he says, when you are done, he says, run with perseverance the race that is set before you. Then he now says, looking unto Jesus. Hmm. So we are in a race. Do we agree? Number two. The second revelation that Paul is giving us here is that there is a formula by which to run. You are not given the liberty to run the way you want to run. That victory or defeat is not just predicated upon the motion of running, but upon your complying with a strategy. That there is a strategy that is given that if you deploy that strategy in running, regardless what happens, the end of it is victory. The end of it is glory. The end of it is praise. Are we together? There is a formula by which to run that guarantees winning in this race called life, in this race called destiny. Now, please listen carefully. The formula is a spiritual posture that you must assume. The formula is a spiritual orientation without which there is no possibility of winning. Are we together now? So verse 1 establishes the fact that we are in a race 
Then verse 2 reveals the formula. He says there is a way if you do not run, you will lose. And Paul calls that strategy for victory. Looking unto Jesus. It's not just a description of a man. He's handing to you a formula by which if you run, he says you will win. So when he says so run, he says there is a way that the cloud of witnesses, they all run in a certain way. Regardless what happened around the stories of their days, the end is that they won, they obtained. And now Paul is about to teach us how to run so that we win. Who is ready to learn? Looking unto Jesus. Looking unto Jesus. How many of you know that when you are running, you know, in your normal race, you are not supposed to look at anyone. You are supposed to look straight and finish. That's how you run in the field. But he's saying this kind of race, are we together now? If you run blindly, he's saying you will lose. There is a formula by which we run that your eyes has to look a particular direction. He says, looking unto Jesus. Then he calls him the author and finisher. I don't want to go ahead of myself. There is a reason he's displaying the credentials of Jesus. Why he's the recommended person to look at. And among the many things that qualify him to be worthy of being looked at is that he is author and finisher of our faith. Do you know what that means? He's speaking here about the Jesus that started and finished. The author and the finisher of our faith. Who for the joy that was set before him. That he, Jesus, also ran. And he ran in a certain way. That on account of his efficiency, he is today enthroned Lord and Christ. Are we together now? That what qualified, listen. It is enough to follow him because he's the word of God. But beyond that, he's saying he stripped himself and ran also. That on account of his victory, regardless what happened, he won. He's qualified to be like you'll be learning a pattern for you. Looking unto Jesus. Are we together? Let's discuss that word, look, my God. Someone's life is about to change. The Bible uses a very interesting word and I want to dwell here a bit. The word look. Very simple word, but it's not as simple as English puts it. The word look, I'm going to give you three important definitions and they will guide our discussion tonight. Are you learning so far? So number one, that we are all in a race. Whether you understand it or not, whether you agree or not, whether you live in denial or otherwise, Paul calls the spending of your days per time, per day, per week a race. And he says that there are people who are already on their way to perdition and destruction. And he's encouraging the church in Corinth as much as we the believers today that there is a way he intends for us to run so that we may obtain. And then he now begins to unveil that formula. And he says the name given to the strategy that turns ordinary men to run and win is called looking unto Jesus. What does it mean to look? Number one. The first definition to the word look means to rely on or to depend upon. The idea of look, number one, means to trust. Or let me start it from, to look means to direct one's gaze. Let's start from that. Let that be our first consideration. This is a natural meaning of the word look. When we say look, it means to direct one's gaze. It means to focus towards someone or something with expectation. To look again means to direct one's gaze. If I say look on me, it means turn your attention from wherever else, anything else that has stolen your attention, disappoint it as you set your gaze on me and look with expectation. Are we together? So the word look here means to direct one's gaze, to focus towards someone or something with expectation. Acts chapter 3 and verse 4. 
The Bible tells us that Peter and John went to pray at the hour of prayer. And then they saw a gentleman, Acts chapter 3 and verse 4. They saw one who was crippled from birth. By the time we get to verse 4, read with me South Africa. And Peter fastening his eyes on him said, look on us. That's the first definition there. Meaning, take your eyes and your gaze away from everything, including the pain, and focus with expectation. The Bible still adds further flesh to the definition of Luke there, verse 5. It says, and the man, he gave heed to them, expecting. He gave heed to them, expecting who is understanding now so when the bible says look unto jesus the first definition means to take your gaze away from everything and other one and to focus the idea there is focus to focus on jesus isaiah chapter 50 and verse 7 to direct your gaze isaiah 50 and verse 7 Look unto Jesus. Isaiah 50. Can we read it together? Do you like the word of God? Yes. One to go. Therefore, I have set my face like a flint. And I know. To look. Listen. To look unto Jesus by this definition means to focus. No plan B. No looking at any other thing. Looking away. Paul is teaching us how to run so that we win. And he's saying when you look unto Jesus, the first idea is that of focus. Seeing that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside everything that can steal your attention. This is about attention. He says you win when your entire focus is fixed, fixated on Jesus. Focus void of distraction. Number two, to look in this context and by this definition means... To rely on or to depend wholly on. So the first definition is about focus. But the second definition is about dependence. Dependence. Who is learning? To rely on or to depend on. To trust, to believe. Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 5. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. And it says, lean not on to your own understanding. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not on to your own understanding. This second definition means that you look to Jesus as reliable and worthy of your trust. Absolute trust. Absolute trust. Psalm 123, 1 and 2. Please be patient as we consider a few scriptures. It's important for you to understand what the Bible says here. It says, unto thee, O Lord, will I lift up my eyes. 123, 1 and 2. It says, thou that dwellest in the heavens. Verse 2. It says, behold, as the eyes of servants look to the hand of their masters, and as the eyes of a maiden unto the hand of their mistress. Are you seeing the contrast now? A maiden to the mistress, depending. There's nothing the mistress can do. I mean, the maiden can do until assisted by the mistress. So the idea, look here, means to depend. In that manner, it says our eyes wait upon the Lord until that he has mercy upon us. So when the Bible says look, he's not just saying be focused. He's saying get to a point where you realize that your entire success resides by your depending. Are we together now? That it resides in your depending upon God. Some trust in horses. Others trust in chariots. He said but we, but we will trust in the name of our God. Dependence. There are many people who cannot see the hand of God in their lives because they do not understand the power of absolute trust. Isaiah chapter 45 and verse 22. 
Isaiah 45 and verse 22. We're examining that word look. Are you ready? Please read with me and don't be tired of reading. One, two, go. Uh huh. So he says, Look unto me, and that there are consequences when you look at me as though depending on me. He says, You will be saved. And the reason is because I am God and there is none else. He's talking of capacity. He said, I am, I am what you're depending upon because there is no God like me. Are we together? To look unto Jesus. Now, James chapter 1, please, from verse 22 to 25. It's important that your understanding be founded on the integrity of God's word. Are we together now? That the basis of your understanding should not just be sentiments and thoughts that are playing around you have to allow the bible teach you how to trust god and that we're taking this scripture so that you will understand it says but be ye doers of the word apostle james now and not hear us only he says deceiving yourselves understand the context now now let's go to verse 23 for if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he says, he is likened to a man beholding his natural face in a glass. Verse 24. He says, for he that beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straightway forgeteth what manner of man he is. So he likens doing the word, engaging the word like looking in a mirror. And then verse 25. He says, but whoso looketh unto the perfect law of liberty are we together and continue therein be not a forgetful hearer but a doer of the work that man whoever that man is shall be blessed in his deed absolute dependence so the word looks means to focus it means to trust to believe to depend Number three, the final definition for the word look. Are you ready? The word look, thirdly, and this is where we are going to dwell for tonight. It means to derive a blueprint from. It means to model after. It means to understudy a lifestyle for the purpose of replication. I will take it again. Don't worry, South Africa. The plane is lifting slowly. Are you ready? So, <laughs> ah, I love South Africa, my goodness. Are you ready now? So the third definition of look, now pay attention. It means to derive a blueprint from. It means to model after. It means to understudy for the purpose of replication wow so when the bible says look unto jesus you see that it's not a very simple word english did not do justice in describing what paul was saying paul is saying i want to show you a formula that if any man follows he will run this race with victory number one he talks of focus number two he talks of dependence but number three he means when you look to Jesus, you are deriving from what you see a blueprint. Are we together? You are modeling after and then you are understudying for the purpose of replication. Don't forget this. Understudying for the purpose of replication. So he says, look unto Jesus that if you want to win, you derive a blueprint from him. You model after him. And you understudy a lifestyle or an approach for the purpose of replication. Two scriptures. Isaiah chapter 51 from verse 1 and 2. This is not the first time the Bible is saying to look unto as though to pattern after. The Bible says, Hearken to me ye that follow after righteousness. 
that seek the Lord. He says, look unto the rock whence you were held and the hole of the pit whence you were dead. Read with me. One to go. Look unto Abraham your father. Now the word look here does not mean see him. It means understudy him. He is my portrait of a blessed man. That every time I say a man is blessed in the Bible, do not confuse it. There is a man that personifies what it means to be blessed of God. And he says, look unto him. He says, and unto Sarah that bear him. For I called him alone and blessed him and increased him. That every time you want to be blessed and to increase God's way, you have to go and use this pattern man, Abraham. Anytime you claim to be blessed and you do not look like Abraham, then you have, you have compromised on that pattern. Are we together now? This is very important. Matthew chapter 4 and verse 19. Matthew chapter 4 and verse 19. This is powerful. Matthew 4 and verse 19. Matthew chapter 4 and verse 19. Let me explain to you the meaning of the third definition, Luke. And he said unto them, follow me, follow me and I will make you. Follow me and I will make you. Follow me. So when he says look unto him, it's beyond using your eyes. He's saying follow, pattern after me. Come after me. Are we together? And then he says, I will make you. In this case, fishers of men, but he's made them many other things. Follow me and I will make you. Are we together now? This is very powerful. That means to use Jesus as your pattern, as your model, and as your template. First Peter 2 21. I'll begin to teach now. First Peter 2 and verse 21. First Peter and verse 21. The Bible says, For even here unto ye were called, because Christ also suffered for us. Read with me, South Africa. Leading us an example that we should follow. He left an example. That means everything Jesus did upon the earth, there were many other expressions to it, but among the many things he achieved was to set a pattern, an example. And the Bible says our mandate is to follow in his steps. Now listen, these three dimensions of looking, focus, dependence, and modeling is what the Bible calls beholding. So every time the Bible says you are beholding, this is what he means. He talks about your focus, he talks about your dependence, and he talks about modeling after. Who is understanding me so far? Paul is saying that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses that if you find any witness that was victorious in their journey, their focus was on God, their dependence was on God, and they modeled their lives after the pattern of the heavenly. This is why they won. And he's saying if you run in such a way that there is a guarantee that regardless what happens, you are victorious. Hallelujah. The formula for completing the race that is called life is called looking unto Jesus. Isn't it amazing that he's not just saying consider. He's telling you that I want to give you a formula that if you ever find anyone upon the earth past, dead, or now alive, excelling in his faith adventure that it is because that person as akin to a race has deployed this strategy that we call looking unto Jesus, focus on him, total dependence on him and then modeling your life after the Christ are we together? this is very powerful now, the fourth thing I want you to learn is that there are three things that happen when we look. You have to understand this. I'm still setting my foundation. If we stop at the foundation, that is fine. But you need to understand it. Because what God is about to build on this foundation will help you see far. 
Are we together? Three things happen when we look. Number one. The first thing that happens when we look is that we see. Revelations chapter 4. When we look, we see. When we look, we see. The first thing that happens to us when we set our gaze on Jesus is access to revelation. Access to the mysteries of the kingdom. The Bible says, after this, I looked. When I looked, I beheld a door. That door was opened in heaven and the first voice which was as of a trumpet said, come up hither and I will show thee things which must be after. The first way you know you are looking is you will never be scarce of revelation. Listen. If your Christian experience is bankrupt of the light that produces victory part time, it's a diagnosis of a spiritual condition that you are not looking. Are we together now? The first proof that a man is looking is that regardless the season, there is a light component that helps you to navigate seasons until you win. That when believers become helplessly stranded, it is because they have violated the formula for running the race. Do you know why? Because when you look unto Jesus, what you do not understand is that this race is not run straight. The race that you run in your field, you begin that race and you look straight till you finish. But the race of destiny, look at me, ladies and gentlemen. Your first action may be to move left. Your second action in running may be to stay there. And stay there, yet you are running. Are we together now? So, the idea of running is not motion. The idea of running is that you are replicating what you are seeing. That if he moves, you move, you are running. If he stays, you stay, you are running. He's saying this is the skill that many who won, there were times in their life they were mysteriously stagnated for reasons you could not explain, yet they were running. That there is a skill. It is not a race. Like the race you know. It is not that the gun is shot and you keep running forward forward is not always the way forward that there are times listen there is a man who can run his race by standing in one place for three years from the time the gun was shot and he was not in error that's how he's <laughs> Listen to me. So a gentleman can be called into ministry. And for the first five years, God tells him for the blueprint of your life and for you to win. You are not going to open any ministry. You, yet that is an apostle. For a long time he will look like a failure. Are we together now? He doesn't seem to be moving forward. Do you read in your Bible that for 30 years you would have called Jesus a visionless man? How do you have 33 years to fulfill an assignment and by 30 you have not started? What, what, what sort of a vision, what sort of a man is that? Listen, 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 listen. Look at me. I am an advocate of speed. You would have called the life of Jesus delay. 
But the Bible says anyone who obtained, there was a formula they used. My assignment is to show you that formula tonight. Because some of you are already running well, but the devil is deceiving you because you don't know the skill for victory. If you are running well, why has the ministry not started? If you are running well, why has this not happened? If you are running well, why the tragedy? The Bible calls those things distractions. It says that they have the ability to make you heavy and stop you from running. Listen, please sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. We're lifting the plane, sit down. Who is understanding me so far? Paul said, all run. But something happens to others on the way. They look at the way the blueprint of other people's destinies are. And they comparing themselves with themselves. You would have called Jesus a failure. If I have 33 and a half years to live on earth, I should start ministry at age 5. But by age 29, Jesus is even missing. From age 12 till age 30, no one knows where he is. At least we don't know from scripture. From 12 we know that he was at the temple and then he disappeared. The next time we see him, he shows up as a 30 year old man. Mr. Man, you have three and a half more years and you claim to be a savior. God will give you this kind of assignment to achieve in three years. It's called the way of the spirit. That someone can gather all his money to build a house and the spirit of God can tell him, sow it now. It's not a license for laziness nor manipulation, but that there is a way a mark for you and you will look stupid and like a failure. Where will I start from? When you see a seed dying, it is called failure, but you don't see a tree growing. Are we together now? For someone here, God brought you to this conference to reassure you that you are doing things right. That regardless the confusion, you've been waiting for a marching order for a long time and there's silence. It is part of how your race was designed. Elanto sabranti kaparatushi. Yes sir. yes sir please listen I need you to lend me your attention I want to say a few things now we are just establishing a foundation that you must understand let me recap on everything I've said now you will understand that number one Paul calls destiny actualization and our sojourn on earth a race you still remember that and that everyone is running every day including now from the time this service started till now, you've been running. And Paul is saying that there is a possibility of wasting your time, even though you are running, and wasting your days. And he says it is not a problem of lack of energy or lack of motion. It is deviation from the pattern that produces victory. That your ability to win is not in the energy that is dissipated in the race. Are we together now? That if you walk by this formula called looking unto Jesus. And that number one, that formula deals with your focus. It does something to your distraction. That a man who is distracted cannot look unto Jesus. Number two, he talks about dependence. That provided there are many options, you will not win dependability and then number three he's saying that everybody runs based on a model and a template and that the life of Jesus 
has within it a model that you can fetch out by revelation. Are we together now? And now I am teaching you that the first implication, ladies and gentlemen, how you know you are looking unto Jesus is that you will see. Sight here is very powerful because that was the desire of blind Bartimaeus. Blind Bartimaeus never said that my eyes should open. He said that I may receive. Your eyes can be open and yet you are not seeing. His request was not to... He said that I may receive my sight. There are people here tonight, you need to receive your sight. Because you have lost touch. You are looking, but you are not seeing. How do I know you are not seeing? Based on the interpretation of your situation, it shows you are not seeing. You have called process shame. You have called preservation delay. The names that you give your situation tells me you are not seeing. Who is learning? The way of a spiritual man is a very strange path. That for a long time it's only you and God that will know the name of what you are doing. It does not make sense to men. Is someone learning now? We do not yet see all things under his feet. But we see Jesus. So back to my story. At age 30, ladies and gentlemen, Jesus is still roaming around somewhere, wherever. Then, when he clocks 30, do you know that John the Baptist was frustrated baptizing because the baptism was a formula to identify Jesus and ordain him to ministry. That guy had been baffing everybody and could not find. He would watch, bring them out. No heavens open. Go away. No heavens open. And then the Bible says, watch this now. One day, while John is baptizing, he looks because he was following a pattern. The first thing was that he saw. He saw. He saw. He saw. He saw. He saw. What others could not see, John saw. And when he looked, they were looking at a man. And he said, behold, I have seen. Behold the lamb. We're coming there. I'm not, I, I will not, I, we, we, have, we have a, don't worry, tonight we're introducing and then we'll pray. Because I'll be teaching you that there are seven dimensions of Jesus you must see. If not, you will fail. Seven. One of it is the clue that I give you now. You must behold the lamb. That is the first dimension of him that you see. If you cannot see Jesus as the lamb of God, you've not even started your race. That in the economy of heaven, your race does not start when you are born. Your race starts the day you behold the lamb. So there are people in the spirit now, physically they are 40 years, but in the spirit they are one years old. The reason is because they got born again last year. So as far as heaven is concerned, you are only one year into your race based on God's pattern. Anyway, sit down. John says, When we get overwhelmed, we'll pray in tongues for one minute and then we'll continue. Are we together? So John says, behold the lamb, watch this, that takes away the sins of the world. And then Jesus comes to John and John says, based on what I have seen, I'm not even qualified to untie the latchet of your shoe. And he says, suffer it to be so that scripture may be fulfilled. The Bible says that when he dipped Jesus and brought him out. The Bible says the heavens were open. The Holy Ghost. Hmm. That means the formula for victory is you never start till the Holy Ghost comes. You see the same pattern with the apostles? 
Jesus warned them, follow my pattern. Tarry. You have enough information, but don't go. It doesn't work that way. If you carry brain work and go, you will fail. Tarry. The Holy Ghost needs to come. There is something he comes with. When he comes, he becomes a trigger. Now you can go. How does Jesus lecture a people for three and a half years non-stop and he tells them you are still not qualified to go? Stay. Looking unto Jesus. Not even Jesus himself started ministry without the Holy Ghost. Not even Jesus himself. Are we together now? Remember that he came as the word incarnate. What else was he waiting for? John chapter 1 and verse 3. The Bible says all things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made. So what was the word waiting for again? Looking unto Jesus. There are many times you feel ready. There are many times you believe you are ready. But the Spirit of God constrains you. He says if you move now, the trigger in the spirit that should announce you is not there. And sometimes you can announce yourself and struggle for a long time. You see, and because your struggle is not demonic, it's a problem of deviation from patterns. Even if you bind and cast that struggle, it will not go because the anointing does not fight God. Are we together? Let me give you a counsel. By the word, the privilege of mentorship and experience, every time you pray over a matter and bind and cast and it does not change, take your eyes away from the devil and find out what pattern you are violating. Did you hear what I said? The devil is not that powerful. Having the readiness to judge every disobedience if and when your own obedience is complete. So the pattern for Jesus was to tarry. As an adult, still tarry. You learned in the temple, still tarry. Are we together now? Yes, still tarry. 30 years old. I have three more years, but if the Holy Ghost has not come, tarry. Don't waste what is left. It's his presence that brings value to the time you have. But as soon as the Holy Ghost came, the Bible says, the Spirit drove him to the wilderness. He went there, he prayed 40 days, he prayed 40 nights, he fasted, was tempted of the devil. Then the Bible says he returned in the power of the Spirit. And in a moment, he says his fame his fame what manner of man is this what breed of a man is this he was invincible he manifested dominion with power there was a pattern he followed are we together and then he gets to a point where overnight the one strong and great mighty invisible Jesus invincible in power suddenly becomes weak and helpless that when men came to capture him, he gave himself so freely, he was running. This was the hidden wisdom that Paul said, if the princes of this world knew. The disciples were shocked. How does Jesus become so weak? They thought he was going to just speak a word and defeat all those people. He gave himself and like a sheep to the slaughter. The disciples ran away because they concluded that this man was a failure. His agenda of a savior was a scam and they needed to run for their lives. And he hung upon the tree. Ladies and gentlemen, he made a strange statement. It is. It is not the statement. It's where he said it. How do you say it is finished on a tree? I understand it is finished when you are seated at the right hand in a place of honor and yet on a tree, the epitome of failure, yet he still said it is. In other words, I have run correctly according to script. 
the beating according to script the seeming weakness according to script giving myself like a sheep to the slaughter according to script being quiet when I had what to say according to script Paul says you want to win look unto Jesus that you have to model your spiritual life after this pattern are we together now if you do not model your spiritual life after the pattern Jesus Paul says you are already doomed for failure in other words even Jesus the son of the living God he made an honest admission that I can of myself do nothing Jesus do Jesus how could he declare such insufficiency as the word that I can of myself do nothing as I see my my daily work depends on that which I see I'm in the business of replicating the heart of the father and even though I will not want to go to the cross my way but nevertheless since that is what is in the father's heart not my will but yours be done are we together now and he died and when he resurrected the Bible says wherefore on account of compliance with that pattern God gave him a name and that he gave him that name to be above every other name and that at the name of Jesus every knee must bow of things in heaven are we together the earth and under the earth and every tongue must confess that that Jesus who walked in keeping with divine pattern is now Lord to the glory of the Father now listen to me South Africa I will tell you the difference between enviable prophetic destinies and destinies that are void of color dominion and exploits is not necessarily being born again you can have two believers who are saved but one has decided to look on to Jesus whereas another person decided to invent a formula to run his life with and the thing about God is that when you choose to reject his formula he will respect whatever you bring but you must be ready to face the consequence of using another formula Paul is saying many run how many of you know that all the people in the field are usually trained by someone including the person who takes the last position he was trained by someone only that his formula was weak and inferior and the only way it is tested is when the gun is shot and everybody begins to run are we together now we play football and there are nations that from their first match they return home now I don't mean to be are we together they all came in the field they were dressed they jogged they were happy and yet and the ones who won them most times were confident they knew they were sending them home how do you pay for people's flight tickets they get I'm not being sarcastic and from the first match they lose all the matches and return home it's not the players the problem is the formula look at me when you mention prestigious universities today like Harvard Yale Stanford MIT and all these great global do you know why they excel it is not necessarily the students it is that they have designed they found a winning formula are we together and that any student that diligently passes through that formula will emerge a certain kind of student organizations began to identify students who pass through those institutions because of this formula when you eat McDonald's or KFC the reason why there is consistency regardless who prepares it is because they submit to the same formula are we together now isn't it amazing that they fire and employ people and you do not know based on the taste of what you are eating you are not even aware that the person who made the chicken it was his first time the power of that formula so Paul is saying if you lose in the race of life 
it is because you did not respect this formula please I want you to understand what I'm teaching you tonight there is a formula something plus something in the spirit equals an apostle something plus something in the spirit equals a prophet something plus something in the spirit equals kingdom wealth something plus something in the spirit equals a healing ministry something plus something in the spirit you don't just carry mantles you don't just carry the anointing you don't just carry grace there is a formula that produces an intercessor there is a formula that produces a prayer warrior there is a formula that produces a, a healing evangelist there is a formula that produces a man of influence there is a formula that produces a man of power listen please listen to me I don't mean to insult your understanding but please listen to me how many of you know that a professor of medicine and surgery from here in South Africa can meet for the first time with a professor of medicine and surgery in America and meet with a professor of medicine and surgery from India their first time of meeting can be the surgical room for the first time and none of them would doubt themselves because there was an institution that accredited them so if why do I see a believer in South Africa and a believer in Kenya and a believer in Nigeria and a believer somewhere else and there are different variety of people I'm telling you that those variety are a reflection of the deviation or compliance to this pattern this is the reason for failure now, you may blame the landlord you may blame your wife you may blame your husbands they are the obvious answers not the right ones that there are consequences please listen God himself designed I hope you know sit down sit down please sit down I hope you know that Apostle Paul before he began his exegesis of the Pauline epistles Paul humbly gave us his credentials to know the basis of his apostolic authority Ephesians 3 and verse 3 so that you did not doubt when you heard him speak things that were very deep he says how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery as I wrote a four in few words verse 4 it says whereby when you read you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ which before time verse 5 was hidden it was not made known to the sons of men but now it is being revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the spirit what is the mystery verse 9 that this mystery makes all men see verse 9 all men all men to make all men regardless your background it can open your eyes to see what makes for victory let me tell you this ladies and gentlemen I have read my Bible everyone the Bible calls a cloud of witness in their generation there was a pattern for victory and glory that was revealed whoever became great was not necessarily the one prophesied but the one who walked in keeping with that pattern please listen let me digress for a moment and teach you something the Holy Spirit taught me a few years ago the Holy Spirit taught me that every name Apostle Felix that you find in the Bible patriarchs men and women who did exploits in the spirit that when you find those names they are not just the names of men they also represent spiritual pathways that produces a certain kind of believer listen so when you say Abraham Abraham is beyond a man Abraham is the name given to a kind of spiritual path that when you follow you will become a portrait of a blessed man that Jacob is not just the name of a man 
Jacob is the name of a certain kind of spiritual pathway that leads to encounters. So if you want to encounter God, the individual that personifies that dimension is the man Jacob. Are we together now? That when, when you look at the woman called Mary, she's beyond the mother of Jesus. She's a description of a kind of way the Holy Spirit leads men. Mary is not about a woman. Mary is about a pathway. There is a pathway when you are holding something precious. God begins to train you in a way that parallels what he did for Mary. That what others can go free with, he keeps you. When you begin to see unusual consecration, then you see the pattern of Mary. It means something that is about to be born in you is a holy thing. Are we together now? One of the ways you test spirits is to check the character of the dealings of God as consistent with those he built in the Bible. If your training cannot parallel a name in the Bible, it's a familiar spirit leading you. Are we together? That means somewhere in your journey, you should be able to see that you are imagined parallel to someone. If God is going to call you to be an apostle, you, no matter how unique your ministry is, you will find the parallel of your dealing and your training. It is one of the ways we judge spirits. Hmm. Hallelujah. Let's get back to our discussion. So three things happen when we look unto Jesus, number one is that when we look unto Jesus, we see. What do we see? A pathway. A pathway through Jesus. The Bible calls it an ancient path. Jeremiah 6, 16. That when you set your gaze on Jesus, your focus, your dependence, and your willingness to part, to pattern your life after him, as a reward for looking, the spirit of grace will draw forth the things that have been revealed by the spirit ordained for our glory. He will start showing you a certain pathway that when you walk, the end of it must be glory. It doesn't matter how your life starts. I reckon that the sufferings of this present time, Romans 8.18, are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. Bring to me any believer regardless what level of failure. Let me just verify that that person is malleable enough to look to Jesus. I will show you a wonder that will eventually manifest. Do you know why? All I need to do is to bring the person to alignment with this formula called looking unto Jesus. And I'll explain to you in detail what it means to look unto Jesus. So number one, when we look to Jesus, we see. Everybody say we see. The only way to find the pathway, how do I say this now? There is a pathway you can find from scripture that guides believers to victory. Are we together? But there is a pathway unique to you based on what God has called you to do. Are we, are we understanding now? You start with the Bible, but eventually the Holy Spirit will come and navigate you through a path that does not make sense to any other person who is not you. It is the path branded for your own result. Are we together now? When you look onto Jesus, you will see. If you have not seen the path that leads to your victory, it is you don't look for it you look for Jesus when you look for Jesus among the many rewards is that you will see Lord what should I do with my life uh -uh. you don't find purpose by searching for purpose you find purpose by looking unto Jesus number two when you look unto Jesus the second thing that happens to you is that you are changed you are changed. 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 18. You are changed. Please give it to us. The Bible says, but we all with open face
beholding. Now you understand what he's saying, right? Beholding through your focus, through your dependence, your willingness to pattern your life after the glory you are seeing. He says we are changed into the same image from glory to glory and that by the Spirit of God. We are changed. Transformation. That when you look onto Jesus, the implication is that every dimension of God you catch in your vision, you will begin to become it. You will begin to become it. I'll teach you tomorrow. I hope I let's see how many of them we are going to capture. There are seven dimensions of Jesus you must capture in your looking onto Jesus. You want wholesome dominion and victory. Hallelujah. Because there were things that other disciples saw, but there were things only three of the disciples saw. And those three, as they saw it, they became the pillars of the apostolic ministry. And when Satan started killing the people, you will see that he looked for those three. He looked for James, killed him. Went to Peter, killed him was searching for John till John landed in the Isle of Patmos. He wanted to kill everybody, but there were certain three because of something they saw. They beheld a dimension of God's glory the other apostles did not see. <laughs> Hallelujah. There is something a man can see and then you begin to be changed. Weak you, prayerless you, carnal you, fleshly you, as you are looking on to Jesus, something is happening within your spirit, man, that people can look at you and know that this man is changing. This man is changing. The way you are speaking, you did not intend for it to change. It is the implication of looking at Jesus. Are we together now? Every believer who remains the same version for a long time has stopped looking at Jesus. It is impossible to look on to Jesus and remain the same version. No. The Bible says in Acts chapter 2, chapter 3, they looked at those people, chapter 2 and 3. And the Bible says that they knew they were unlearned men, but they reckoned that they had been with Jesus. They had been with Jesus. Now, let me tell you something in honest submission. Many today in the body of Christ have stopped looking unto Jesus. And they are looking onto things that only his presence can bring. Like anointing, like money, like fame. And because the devil knows that this, I hope you know that the devil has an advantage of age. He's been in this system for a very long time. He's any other thing but a fool. Are we together? Satan is defeated, you are correct. Satan is a loser, you are correct. Satan is under my feet, you are correct. But Satan is a fool, you are wrong. You are wrong. You are wrong. Are we together now? I'm saying this because most believers, I am burdened. Most believers have not been able to become that portrait of glory and dominion and power. We have lost a formula that must be restored to the body of Christ. We have lost a formula. It's the reason why we lack power. A lot of talking. But there is no power. A lot of propositions on what God can do. God can change my family. Yes, you are right. God can, the cattle on a thousand hill belongs to him. But we are still poor. We are still broke. Honestly speaking. This is a, a, a let's be honest with ourselves. How many things can we do without crying? Are we together? Our not looking on to Jesus, our deviating from the formula he gave has made us to misrepresent him. So if men are to learn the power of God through our lives, the glory of God through our lives, we will become a bad representation of the Christ. The church of the Lord Jesus Christ in our current state now, even though God is helping us, but our current state has turned God to look like a liar. It is the reason why the nations are consciously rejecting him. 
there is no proof to our speakings. There are many believers today who have to pray in tongues before you know they are saved. It means they have not become the character of the Christ. Something about the nature of Christ has not been fully formed in them. It says, my little children of whom I travail in birth until Christ. That they can look at a man and without, the Bible says they will call you ministers of our God. Because when they look at you, your disposition, as you exude the nature of Christ, the only name they can give you is pastor. Not because you are a pastor. That's the closest thing to the transformation they are seeing. I'm not talking of praying in tongues or just dressing like a pastor. That something about a rich display of the fruit of the Spirit in your life. Are we together now? Yes. Many believers, it is clear that we have deviated from the formula that produces power. The formula that produces grace. With all due respect, servants of the living God, I tell you this with every sense of humility. By the mercies of God, I know what it means to have results. There are many people who will not have result for a long time and sadly forever. It is not a problem of energy or zeal. It is a problem of patterns. If you run fast on the wrong direction, you are still wrong. You are just hurrying to pain faster. Are we together? Today, you see, we do a lot. We do the things that the Bible says we should do but not in keeping with the patterns that should produce them. For instance, in the name of Jesus, everybody who is sick, you are going to be healed now. And we are not lying, except that it becomes a lie later on. We don't intend to lie, but the result does not show. Are we together? Now, I'm speaking apostolically, not just to House of Treasures. You understand now? Oh, in the name of Jesus, be blessed. And the truth is, the person returns. He's not blessed. It's just that they respect us as men of God and nobody wants to embarrass us. But the truth is that they are not blessed. Are we together? Now, now let me make a statement. And when you come into a conference like this and see what God has done, and see what God is doing. Let me tell you the truth. It is good to glorify God in a man. But it is wise for you to know that results are controlled by patterns. God is a God of patterns. Listen, his creation of patterns is part of his system of justice. So that it shows that he does not show favoritism. Righteousness and justice is the foundation of his throne. He told Cain, he said, if you have done it well, will your sacrifice not be accepted? In other words, God did not choose to bless another person at the expense of another. No, he made the patterns available and planted teaching priests to help you. And their assignment is to open your eyes that you will see. There is a pattern that if you follow as looking unto Jesus, because like you will be learning, Jesus has many dimensions. It says, come and learn of me. There are things you will learn. Are we together? There is a way you look to Jesus as the lamb, you will be saved. There is a way you look to Jesus. There are many dimensions to him. And I'm going to be showing you. And you will be using these visions to cross-check the result in your life. If you lack power, there is a dimension of Jesus you have not looked at. There is a dimension of Jesus that controls power. Are we together now? Yes. The resurrected king is a dimension that controls power. Acts 4.33 And with great power gave the apostles witness, not of the crucified, of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. There is something you must know and see to access the resurrection power that defends that vision. My cry for the body of Christ, not just in South Africa, but all, of, all, all over Africa, is that the deficiencies in our spiritual life, Apostle Felix, the, the kinds of weak believers, with all due respect, that are being raised, 
it is not necessarily about a man of God being good or bad. It is that we've not even understood the pattern to be used. There are students today who do bad in school, not because they are bad. They were not privileged, like we say, to go to a good school. Am I right on that? You look at the students and you see zeal. But unfortunately, they went to a school where they couldn't help it. And there are others who may be average students, but because they went to an exceptional school, you get to a school where the person who scores 20th position has 84%. 84%. And it's called position 20. What a good school. And yet you go to another school, the person who took first position has 56%. The problem is standard, the standard. So this conference is to lift a bar. To raise a standard. That when you say, I am a Christian, there is an expectation. There is a level of power. There is a level of wisdom. There is a level of character. There is a level of grace that must emanate from your life. Are we together? You can start in a manger, but if you remain there, you are not looking on to Jesus. Jesus started in a manger, but he did not end there. He ended on the throne. And Paul says, to run this race, don't be in a hurry to start moving. Let me teach you. We are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. All of them ran. And they ran in such a way that at the end of it, they end that status that he calls in Hebrews 11 as elders. It was not age that gave them the status. It was the degree of their compliance to pattern. There is a dimension of Jesus that when you see in one year, your ministry can quantum leap 10 years worth of results. It is true. It is true. It is true. There is a dimension of Jesus that when you see, you will never lack helpers again for the rest of your life. You see, let me tell you this. There are graces that defend revelations. The proof that light has entered you is the grace to demonstrate it also comes with it. Anything you claim to know without the grace component to live it out here and now has not yet entered your spirit. When you say I carry favor, there is a grace. If it, that is the grace that will compel men and systems to treat you in a certain way. And if that is not happening, then you don't have it. It's as simple as that. Hallelujah. I came to challenge you tonight that looking unto Jesus is beyond just reading your Bible. Please sit down. You will read. But I'm explaining to you. So number one, when we look at Jesus, we see. Number two, when we look at Jesus, we are transformed. Number three, when we look at Jesus, we are empowered to manifest the glory of God. I'll find somewhere and pray for tonight. Let me just take one dimension of Jesus. The Bible says we can behold Jesus as the lamb that was saying. It says worthy is the lamb, not worthy is the king. Worthy is the lamb that was slain. He did not receive what he received because he was a king. He received what he received as a lamb. That means when you want to receive, you will not receive as a king. There are things you need to become that portrait of a lamb. It is true that we are kings and priests. But you need to find out at what point you receive what. A lamb... Worthy is the lamb that was slain. <laughs> Do I teach this now? Our time is gone. Listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. This is a very fearful statement. I'm not just talking about born again. There is a principle there. We are looking on to Jesus now. Worthy is Jesus the lamb. Worthy is Jesus the slain. 
it was by his being a lamb and by his being slain that he received there are certain levels of spiritual inheritance before you enter those dimensions you will have to strip yourself of being a king even though you are a king are we together Jesus the lamb is the secret of meekness and humility and that is the secret of exaltation if you have not met Jesus the lamb you can be an anointed man but you will see pride all over your life you have met several dimensions of Jesus but not the lamb unfortunately the one who receives wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessings is a lamb that had been slain let me interpret this to you it says let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus he's showing you the secret to his being exalted and he says that even though he was God he stripped himself that means when you are on the journey to empowerment be ready to become a lamb and be ready even to be slain do you understand this I reckon that the sufferings of our present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. You will see a believer who loves God with all his heart, but he gets to a season in his life where almost everything that looks like honor and dignity is stripped away from him. It is not carelessness. He himself does not understand. It was as he began to press into God. Friends disappointed him and left him. He's becoming a lamb. Something is happening. He's about to encounter power. He's beholding something about Jesus. I don't know anybody who is a real carrier of genuine power who does not have scars. You must be slain. To receive it is receiving spiritual virtues and becoming a person of stature in the spirit no it's not a king you must become a lamb I hope someone is learning so you get to a point in your life where you are a great CEO somewhere and God will instruct you go and join the ushering team then they will send you to the toilet and whilst you are there, your ego being stung, you don't know that it is a programming in the spirit. While you feel insulted, you are becoming a lamb. Many times you have the ability to say certain things and God says, keep quiet. For a long time you become like a fool. There is a dimension of Jesus that is being birthed in you. He says, behold the lamb. I know you use it just for born again. I'm showing you a dimension. You want power, genuine power that lasts. You want exaltation. Next time you pray and say, Lord, lift me. Make sure you understand what you are saying. Lord, lift me means I want to see the dimension of Jesus that made for his exaltation. And that dimension is not the king on a throne. Ladies and gentlemen, that dimension is that you must become a lamb. And many times that lamb will bleed as though it had been slain, except that it will not die. Job said, though he slay me. You don't like what I'm teaching? Oh dear. Unfortunately, I am showing you the way of authentic apostolic power. I can tell you stories in my own life. Ladies and gentlemen, if it is the God of the Bible you are working with, you'll get to a point in your life. There is nobody that has exactly the same thing he, start, he had in his hand when he started working with God and got power. Your hands must be empty in the journey for power to rest. God will strip you of everything. Everything. You don't hear these messages again, unfortunately. It's the reason why we jump and claim, and I'm not being sarcastic, and we find nothing. We shout in the realm of the spirit, and the demons just look and say, what a generation. You want to speak and that your words carry power. 
you want God to trust you with the destiny of territories ladies and gentlemen I can tell you this before prayer and fasting before a lot of spiritual activities come the first thing that happens is that you must behold the lamb that means you must die death is the secret of life death is the secret of glory when the Bible says so run in a way that you win there were people who got to a point where they were stripped of everything glory they got to a point where their sufficiency became of God so when God calls you you come as you are but he looks at everything that is taking his place in your life and one by one I assure you if it is the God of the Bible he doesn't do that to hurt you he does that to exalt you if it is Isaac be ready Isaac is going if it is your intellect the day your first class with all due respect fails to give you a job that day even before the worship starts you'll be on your knees in church you are becoming a lamb because when you stepped out you stepped out with confidence believing that on the strength of this and there's nothing wrong with that but ladies and gentlemen the economy of heaven demands brokenness and death to carry power brokenness and death The generation that beholds the lamb is the generation that receives in experience everything the lamb receives. The reason why we cry for power and do not find it is because power was not supposed to be a prayer point. It was supposed to be the end product of a process in the spirit. There is nothing wrong praying. But oh God, give me power. Give me power. This version of you cannot carry it. No. You have to be dead enough to host great glory. I wish I had the time to share with you my dealings with God. For many years, I did not understand what God was doing in my life. Where are we going with all of these things we are doing? You pray and fast and study. What is the meaning of, just tell me the name of what we are doing. Listen, I want you to listen. We're going to pray now. I remember the time God instructed me. I was paying two bedroom flat, three bedroom flat for people, and yet I was staying in one room. I would go to preach and return back and stay in one room. It was not luck. What is this that you're doing with me, oh God? I wanted to buy a car. God prohibited me. Now, it may not be like that for you. That's why I cannot make a doctrine out of it. But I'm showing you that in any case, no matter how you run away, if it's that race, one day, God, if it is God you submit to, you must become a lamb and you must be slain. There are many, many men of God who are still full of themselves. That's why they cannot carry power. You must become empty. There are many worshippers who are still full of themselves. That's why they have great voices with no impact. Because how you increase your relevance in the spirit is to decrease self. The more self dies, the louder your impact becomes in the spirit. Listen to me. I have studied the generals and the patriarchs. This is the way they followed. And now thank God for the ministry of fathers. But let me charge co-laborers in the gospel. Please do not hide your scars from the people you are raising. They will find you on the throne, but tell them you were once a lamb. Don't be afraid of saying it. That one day you were a lamb and you were slain. Slain by the wickedness of men. Slain by betrayal, yet you were told to keep quiet. Are we together now? You gave everything and thought the result would come by the next day. After one year, the result had not come. You paid a huge price and people told you, you see, this your God thing is affecting you. Ladies and gentlemen, if we must behold the lamb and run to win, my first charge for us tonight as a foundation for my session is that the missing link to the quality of your Christian experience it may not necessarily be the absence of prayer. 
it may not necessarily be the absence of fasting it may not even necessarily be the absence of Bible study it is the absence of death you have deviated from a pattern Joseph you still see that pattern from the prison to the throne Jesus our pattern man you thought that just because you were called in Christ the next thing you will see is glory um, it doesn't happen exactly like that it is a journey that is the reason why the Bible says Paul said this one thing I do forgetting the things that are before me and reaching forth for the things for the things behind and reaching forth for the things that are before me he says I press towards the mark of the high calling in Christ house of treasures you are where you are today because a man allowed death to walk in him that life will walk in you I can tell you if Apostle Felix should come up here he would tell you times where obedience was costly obedience is not cheap oh. it can be very expensive there is something called obedience unto death that was the kind of obedience that brought the glory of Jesus so today we stand before demons and principalities and powers and say in the name of Jesus be gone and nothing happens even though the Bible says they should go I am telling you that the problem is that we fail to look unto Jesus when you look unto Jesus, the Bible says you are changed. You want to know how change happens? Find out how a seed dies. That's how change happens. I will stop here and we'll pray. Change happens sometimes in death. You get a seed and bury it and come back after days and see that the form and the fashion is depleting, yet it is called progress. A good farmer who can see begins to rejoice. You are rejoicing that the seed is looking rotten because in the midst of that it begins to open up and after a few days life comes out of that death and that life eventually becomes a tree and many people come to take shade from that tree I wish the trees could speak they would have told us stories they would have said gentlemen you pluck fruits from me today but let me tell you how I grew. I grew because I died. That's how I became a great orange tree. That's how I became a great mango tree. And the Bible says you are like that tree. Ladies and gentlemen, I hate to be a bearer of bad news. But as we prepare to pray, there are some of you, this conference is ushering you into a level of authentic Christianity you have never seen. Where you have a personal relationship with Jesus beyond church thank God for church but you are about to know God in a way that only you can define he will lead you through certain paths sometimes uncomfortable the consolation is that as you are looking unto Jesus the Bible calls him the author whatever he starts he finishes even if you do not understand what is happening between you and him you rest in the fact that I know that God is walking in me. God is walking in me. God is walking in me. I think it was two years ago. The Lord gave me an instruction, Apostle Felix. It's not something I say everywhere, but he gave me an instruction to sow a seed. That the ministry should sow a seed. It was a very huge instruction. But I know what happens. When God speaks like that, there is a measure of death he wants to bring in you. I'm not asking you to sow. I just want to teach you something. And then when I was done saying yes, Lord, to your will, he now told me, he said, what I ask the ministry to sow, you as a person, you are going to sow twice that amount. No matter how wealthy you are, you will feel it. If you give Ishmael, you can drive Ishmael in one day. But if you give Isaac, even you, you will know that Kai, this one, Isaac died. And when God told me that, I can't, I can't lie. 
These are the kinds of encounters where God will give you every confirmation you want. A dream, you will get it. Prophecy, you will get it. A vision, you will get it. You must obey. But you see, let me tell you, when I honored God on that wise, what God did in my life, what God did in the ministry, I will simply say to God be the glory. So for me, every time I want to move to a new season, I discern it by a particular frame of dealing from God. When I begin to see an increased demand for consecration, an increased subjection of the flesh, I know a season is coming because that is consistent with God's pattern. Are we together now? Yes. When God subjects me through certain things, certain intense moments of prayer, intense moments of fasting, intense moments of sacrifices, I know that I am, because these patterns are known, he made known his ways to Moses. I begin to rejoice in my spirit, even in pain, because I know that glory is about to be birthed in another level, in another dimension. We are gathered here tonight and there are several people who are in several seasons. I'm announcing to you that not every season that is uncomfortable is demonic. Some of the seasons you have entered now is proof that you were really looking on to Jesus. Hmm. Are we together? One thing you are assured of is that the end will always be glory. But the process many times if you find yourself on the cross find comfort i know there are two thieves around you but you are not a thief the cross is where both good and bad people meet so be comfortable if you're on the cross they may generalize all of you and call you thieves but don't worry after three days <laughs> after three days you saw jesus and you saw the thieves I'm sure someone would look at them and not knowing what happened, say, my God, you mean this man was an armed robber? And then Jesus would keep quiet and say, it is finished. I've completed the process. Now I go to Hades. I collect the keys. And then he resurrected triumphant. And the Bible says, let this mind be in you. Looking on to Jesus is beyond just reading your Bible. My brothers and my sisters, if you really want to understand this, the Bible says, we do not yet see all things. Why? Because there remaineth a rest for the people of God. There is an experience to the kingdom we are yet to step into. Even though potentially in Christ all things are finished, but experientially it is yet to be made manifest in our lives. We're about to pray. Please help me. Two people will start running now. Just hold them so they don't injure themselves. I just saw a vision, two people, the hand of God is coming upon them and they'll just start running. I don't know why God does these things sometimes, but just help me. Once they start, please hold them so they don't injure themselves. Just two people, the hand of God is resting upon them very strong. We're about to pray. Please help, help, help the person. Help that, help the person. Please hold the person. That's what I'm saying. Holy, holy, blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Holy, holy, blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. This right here, ladies and gentlemen, is called the way of the Spirit. It is the way of power. You can quote a man of God but until you drink from the well they drank from you will not see the result. 
there are men today who will blow a shofar and nations will listen it is not the shofar it is the posture in the spirit from which the shofar was blown he said Jesus I know Paul I know as for me I have a covenant with my destiny in Christ that I will keep setting my gaze that every dimension I can find in the Christ I will press by faith and under grace until it finds expression in my life that once more God will showcase through men even some of us by mercy that there are men who can align to him and can represent his purposes but let me tell you this ladies and gentlemen for every man that decides to dig deep with the spirit to stay there ah, the level of glory that you carry it can turn you to look like a god upon the earth and i'm not exaggerating my brothers and sisters there are men that carry power there are men that carry grace there are men that god has god has tied a covenant with There are men who will call upon one helper and it is nations that will answer, not individuals. The kind of grace they carry forbids them to beg. The kind of grace they carry forbids them to be small. The kind of grace they carry forbids them to be barren. The kind of grace they carry forbids them to be under the influence of demonic forces. They are the kinds that you will gather against and scatter even without their knowing because there is blood dripping upon their altar. Tonight, we are just going to pray this one dimension. Worthy is the lamb. Because he said, behold the lamb. John told us to look at the lamb. He is Jesus, but he is a lamb. He is Jesus who saves but in his process of exaltation is a pattern for us to follow you want power you want exaltation you want grace then you must be ready to rise from your throne like he rose up from his throne to strip yourself of that crown are we together now and then to become a lamb even the lamb that was slain and he said i wept for no man was worthy to open the book and unlock the scroll listen to me when by the message of god i got to this dimension of death i began to see dimensions of god's faithfulness and mercy in a way that brought tears from my eyes and i said so this is the secret the body of christ has not found it doesn't just happen because you desire it happens because you comply with a pattern so when you begin to pray listen prayer is a preparatory process that makes you assume the mold of any pattern that can reveal any dimension of glory within you so there is a way you can begin to pray and you are in a season where it is power that is deficient in your life the holy ghost does not just answer by giving you power he answers by subjecting you through the spiritual pathways that make you become a man of power we together you will find out that your appetites now begin to be tamed that appetite for food that appetite to go everywhere God can give you a unique instruction to shut down on entertainment for one year not because entertainment is wrong but because this path you are following requires a unique level of consecration and if you choose to follow that path then you will start accessing power as a worshiper you will stand and raise a song you always sang but it's only that this song is coming from a depth of death and you will see healings and miracles and you will go back and say what changed it was not the melody it was not your voice it was not even your artistry and your competence is that you are now singing from a place of death you have carried glory that comes through your songs as a preacher you will preach the same sermon you've always preached but you will see a different effect because death is working in you 
that life will be revealed in God's people. Can you lift your voice and begin to pray in the spirit in one minute? Kalima salama laka parakata balagata veleke paratas. Kratina kaparanto skiata. We see Jesus. We see Jesus. We do not yet see all things under his feet. But we see Jesus. Go ahead and pray in the spirit. Draw from this fountain tonight. Hello, Madonna. Hello, hello, Madonna. Hello, Madonna. Hallelujah, sir. The Lord told me something years ago and he said if you will let men see me there is nothing I will not give you it sounds like a very simple statement not in our world of desiring presence and wanting to be celebrities let me tell you the truth you don't have the power to lay down your life you only allow God by his spirit to bear that process in you Hallelujah. There were miracles I never saw in my life. Even though I believe that I read the Bible until death walked in me. There were dimensions of influence and grace I never saw. Listen, what you call a great man is simply a dead man. You are going to pray one prayer, ladies and gentlemen. Don't be distracted. I want to speak over you and we're done there is a circumcision that is happening to you I'd like you to open your mouth and pray and say father I obtain grace to behold the lamb the humility of the lamb that brokenness that consecration that contriteness someone go ahead and pray oh pray that and watch exaltation happen in your life and your ministry Alina sobrande gebele kapros Ena kapela gebarada bala katosha brest But we see Jesus our pattern man we see Jesus we run by looking unto Jesus Hallelujah Hallelujah Please do not miss any of these sessions I will be showing you the various dimensions of Jesus you must see and the corresponding dimensions of glory that comes from seeing those dimensions. What happens to you when you behold the Lamb? I will tell you is exaltation. The implication of beholding the Lamb is that you are changed into the Lamb. The similitude of what you see because the Bible says we are changed into the very image. So if you see the lamb, everything in you that negates the character of the lamb, pride, flesh, as you see, that process engineers a process of death within you. And you find out that through that encounter, pride dies. Through that encounter, vain glory dies. Then it makes way for exaltation. And you begin to rise mysteriously but surely but there are other dimensions in this conference i hope that if god grants us grace we will examine seven and let me tell you this everyone who must be used mightily in this end time not just in ministry but in any process of kingdom advance your fortification as a believer and the level of command of dominion will be derived from these dimensions that you see there is something that when you see what you will access is wisdom wisdom that will translate to mighty works 
Hallelujah. Can we wrap up now? Ladies and gentlemen, hear me. We're talking of the lamb. Let me give somebody an opportunity. I saw so many people outside. I think I'm right on that. You are in this place and then those who are outside also. You are saying apostle. You are talking about becoming the similitude of that pattern called the lamb. But for me, I have not even accepted the lordship of Jesus. I told you that in the spirit, the beginning of your race as per God's pattern does not begin when you are born it begins when you are saved are we together so you can be 33 years and with respect to the journey of becoming and destiny actualization you are zero years you are not even born this was the mystery that was being explained to Nicodemus I want to give somebody an opportunity I presume that many altar calls have been made but it happened when you were not yet there and I want to give you a, a chance. You may reject Jesus Christ. But you see, God gave us the power to choose. And with it are consequences. I'd like you to give me the honor tonight of making this call. Those who are saying, I want to make it right with Jesus here online, on site. And those online. And those who are wanting to rededicate their lives to Jesus. I'm going to ask you at the count of five to run and come and stand here. Once the front is filled up, I may request that you stay right where you are. I need one sincere person who is saying, Apostle, if looking on to Jesus is the key to an excelling life, then I do not want to delay further. I count one to five, begin to run. One. Run. For the way of the Lord is the way of wisdom i choose the way of the lord keep coming let's encourage them as they come for the way of the lord is the way of wisdom i choose the way of the lord for the way The way are you running to Jesus? I choose the way of the Lord. Listen to me. A time must come in the life of every man when you make this honorable decision, this noble decision for Jesus. And I'm standing up here with Apostle Felix, the angel of the house. I want you to give us the honor of leading you to Jesus. We see Jesus tonight as Savior, as Lord, and as Christ. Wherever you are, if you are coming, come quickly. I want to begin to pray. Apostle, I have to make it right. I see my dear auntie coming. God bless you. I see a dear sister on her way coming. God bless you. You hurry and come. And for someone who is following online, we want you to encounter Jesus even as the Lamb that takes away the sins of the world when you become a believer you can follow that pattern to your exaltation but right now as it stands you need to encounter the lamb who took your sins away now look at me ladies and gentlemen i hope i'll get to repeat this tomorrow just a moment gentlemen there are three things you receive when you encounter the savior when you get saved Number one, you receive the forgiveness of sin. Number two, you receive the gift of righteousness. Number three, you receive Zoe, the life of God. We'll talk more about that. Because the word life there does not just mean what gives you capacity to breathe in. Every provision available for your victory that is routed to the Christ that sustains the ability to upgrade you to the God class is what the Bible calls Zoe, life. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you for responding to this call. Through the frailty of our communication, you heard the voice of Jesus and you saw the face of Jesus. Let me lead you 
to make this noble decision the wisest decision that any man can make in this side of God's kingdom would you lift your right hand high above your head and say this as loud and as clear as you can say Lord Jesus one more time say it say Lord Jesus tonight I have heard your word hold on one of you will shout now under the anointing I just saw light one of you in front cause that influence lives forever in the name of Jesus now let's pray say it again say Lord Jesus I have heard your word I believe that you are the Son of God I believe that you died for my sin I believe that you rose again for my justification tonight I declare that you are Savior you are Lord you are King of my life I declare that the power of sin Satan hell and the grave is broken over my life from tonight I have eternal life I have Jesus I am a child of God I go forward ever and backward never amen keep your hands lifted let me pray for you and then we'll be directed where to take you father thank you because the Bible declares that as many who will come to you you will in no wise cast away these precious ones have come declaring your lordship over their lives in the name of Jesus and by the authority that is in Christ we declare your sins forgiven we call you bona fide recipients of the life of God from tonight we decree and declare that you walk in victory the power of sin Satan hell and the grave is broken over your life enjoy newness of life in Jesus matchless name we pray amen and amen um, Apostle Felix could you direct us how, how are they please can you go? just follow there are people waving their hands just follow them and just go they're gonna just take a few informations from you so we can be in touch with you to help you maintain this decision you have made today please can you just go with them church can we celebrate these souls come on can we celebrate these precious people come on celebrate them as they go oh I wish you can rejoice like the angels come on celebrate Jesus Keep clapping for them. Keep clapping. Keep clapping. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Just one final declaration and then I'll step out of the stage for Apostle Felix to take over. Now here's what I want you to do. I want to lend my voice with the man of God for all the sessions tomorrow. So tomorrow morning, tomorrow morning at 10, and then all the subsequent sessions, I want you to invite everybody you know that you can find around, tell them to come, that God is opening the scrolls, he's showing us mysteries that translate to a life of dominion and grace. Hallelujah. We're going to be considering this topic further and God is going to be opening our eyes to see. Number two, I want to charge you to get the teachings and listen to it again. Don't assume you heard everything. That's right. Are we together now? And then number three, I want to encourage you to get the links available to as many people. I'm sure that the media would communicate the links so that those who are not able to make it here physically can also connect, particularly for people you know are called into the fivefold, there are things they need to hear in this season so that they step into that grace. But I bless you in the name of Jesus. Amen. I pray for you. Let tonight be a night of encounters for you. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Give Jesus a big hand clap. God Come on, you. celebrate. Come on.
Thanks for watching Revival Time Hub. But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves, for if any be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass, for he beholdeth himself, and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was.